All right, to review kind of the unit, um, we talked about graphing exponential growth functions. Um, we talked about translating that function to the right, to the left, up or down. Um, again, things that you need to include is you need to mark certain points. So at least two points, preferably three. Um, marking points, labeling where they are in the X and Y axis. You need to have numbers, okay? This has, they have one. I would prefer you put even more numbers than this, okay? When you graph functions, you have to include the numbers. You have to include where the asymptotes are. Again, if it's a horizontal line, it's Y is Y equals zero or Y equals negative two. If it's a vertical asymptote, it's like X equals zero or X equals five, um, depending on where it is. Make sure you know what domain. Again, domain is your X values and range is your Y values. Uh, so again, it's not just exponential growth. It's also exponential decay. Again, make sure you can, uh, you can you are able to graph these and you can do it by hand you can label the asymptotes and you can state the domain and the range then we talked about you know the functions involving e um e is an irrational number it never ends um and so we can graph it and it kind of works the same way as exponential functions as far as translating it left, translating it right, moving it up, moving it down. Um, same rules apply when you're graphing. Label the points, label your asymptotes. Uh, make sure your X and Y axes have numbers. Um, and then the domain and the range. <clears throat> Oftentimes when we use the function E, it's due to exponential growth or exponential decay. Um, that is a super common um like when we're ex when a, a bacteria is doubling in size continuously so whenever we have to use kind of like the continuous compounding or continuous decay that's when we use um e then we talked about logarithms and graphing logarithms um they are very similar to uh exponential functions they kind of work um, as an inverses or opposites to each other. So we talked about what to do when you have a base that's not 10. Um, you can use the change of base formula. Um, you can cancel out logarithms by, you know, multiplying, maybe writing instead of 125, you write five to the third power. Um, that's one way that we've, you know, 64 can be written as 8 squared. So those are ways, or 2 to the probably 6th power, I think. But there are ways that you can manipulate and cancel um, different properties out. And that's kind of what we're talking about here in unit, or in part 5, is applying log properties of logarithms. So taking this exponent and moving it out in front or expanding the expression like we can see on the left and then condensing the expression on the right. You will have to be able to do both of those. And again, that's using the properties that are always true and always um, happening with logarithms. And then finally, we finished with solving exponential and logarithmic equations. There are multiple um, techniques or methods that we can do that. So again, make sure that you ha are practiced and that you can, you know, consistently get the correct answer by going through um, problems. So I want you to go through and try these problems. Again, there's kind of an example at the top and then... Uh, different problems for you to try. Towards the end here, you can see some of the answers, the answer keys. So again, try these on your own. Check your answers before you take the test.